Can you share an awkward experience you've had as a black woman being married to a white guy? You know, when you were reading that question, like something popped into my mind and maybe I am ready to talk about it a little bit. Hello, dear friends. Hey guys. Welcome back to the Majestic Family Channel. Uh -huh. My name is Jory and this is my lovely wife. Vidime or B. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and comment down below so we can stay in touch. Don't forget to like, share, turn on your notification bell so, so you know, know when a new video comes, comes out. out. Thank you. All right. Today, we are doing the downsides to interracial relationships. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you must be thinking, how could there be any downsides? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, this is our um, experience, mm -hmm. and hopefully it could prepare somebody else. But um, it's not a generalization. Yes, not an all-encompassing. Yes, because yeah. it's different, different places, yep. different. So um, in this video, Jory's, Jory, my husband, <laughs> is going to be asking mm -hmm. me some questions mm -hmm. that he wrote down. I have yep. not seen any of the yep. questions. I, I told him I don't want to know. That's right. Um, and then we'll just take it from there. I've prepared a list of 10 questions to ask my lovely bride. <laughs> and uh, this hopefully will initiate some form of conversation on the topic of interracial relationships. Mm -hmm. Let's get going. Let's do it. So honey, what has it been like being married to a white guy? That is so general. It is. Um, that's the easy way to start. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It feels like marriage, I guess. <laughs> I I don't know. Like, I can't compare it to uh -huh. any, you know what I mean? Like, it just feels like a relationship. You work at it. You work hard at it. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes harder. Harder. <laughs> put time and, yeah. uh, and effort. You make sacrifice. an effort. Sacrifice. Yeah, sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think... I could say it's better or worse because I've been married to a different race. You right. know what I mean? Right. So yeah. All right. Can you and can you compare and contrast the different social environments from the places you've lived? Now I don't know if you remember a lot from <clears throat> when you were back home, mm -hmm. but like from say like um, where you grew up in America with your family. Okay. And then where we lived in South Carolina okay. and then where we're living now. Can you compare and contrast those different social environments for us in terms of it's, being a it, black woman oh, in those environments? Oh, okay. And so I'll start obviously when I was in high school mm -hmm. um, because that's kind of where I lived before Mr. Wright <laughs> <laughs> Mr. came White. along, Mr. White. <laughs> um, and call me naive, maybe because I was young, I wasn't um, I didn't notice a lot of awkwardness okay. and stuff because in my high, high school was very mixed. Yeah. Uh, it was a good, um, different demographics mm -hmm. when it comes to like, <clears throat> not just black and white, but like Hispanic, right. Vietnamese. Yeah, you had um, Asian, you had Islanders. Like, yeah. yes, it was, it was very di diverse. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't notice anything awkward, like even from my like classmates who were white, uh, quite frankly, I was, I think I had more white friends, but I hung out with two other black girls that mm -hmm. were, uh, one was from America, the other one was um, from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so like three of us hung out quite a bit, um, but I also had a bunch of white friends. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so that was kind of where I grew up and okay. going to stores or anything like that. I never received any stares mm -hmm. like from, I didn't feel any like, Oh, they're treating me that way. Cause I'm black. Right. I didn't experience that as right. much. Um, and then when we moved to South Carolina, well, when we started dating, <laughs> um, we, I would come to visit you at your hometown. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the first time I realized you and I were a mixed race couple or like interracial it became couple. More it, yeah, like we could be walking down the road or like just walking after having lunch or whatever or going out 
and I would see state like people staring or mm -hmm. making like comments underneath their breath before I would go oh that's just my friend that's just my boyfriend Jory we happen to be walking down the street yeah now it was more like oh they noticed that I'm black and he's white right. it became more evident to right. me um, here not to say that we didn't get a stare or two where I was uh, where I did grow up when we moved to the states um, I remember one time we were going out to dinner and a black guy like was staring me down, like <laughs> not happy. Uh, how could you go <laughs> to the other side? <laughs> and I've had that told to me before you went to the other side, girl. <laughs> but I was like, I didn't know there were two sides. But um, yeah, that's the first time I, I felt a disapproval hmm. from a black person. But that was like once from where rare. i was yeah. yes yeah. exactly compared to where we, you were yeah. born oh my yeah. gosh yeah um so then when we moved to south carolina mm -hmm. it was like i didn't feel any stairs right i didn't because it was also, also yeah diverse mm -hmm. um and obviously if we would have gone to an area like the camping trip we took <laughs> where it was predominantly like you know, white <laughs> white people. folks living deep in the countryside. <laughs> no, we had a little bit of problem, but yeah. like I never felt uncomfortable because even the church we attended, there was a bunch of interracial couples. So I mm -hmm. never felt like <clears throat> my relationship was like special or different yeah. or anything like that. No. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, and then now here it's just like straight awkward. <laughs> yeah. This is we're now living back in my home area. Yeah. Where I grew up. Yeah. And so it's totally different here. It's, it's, it's extremely awkward. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do people in the area you now live treat you as a black woman? I think people are surprised. Like, I think their, their expectation of what a black woman or a black person, um, carries themselves or speaks, um, always contradicts like always what's the word like it doesn't match when they meet me mm -hmm. <laughs> they're always surprised <laughs> like oh she's she's friendly or because they think black people they haven't let's way. just put it this way i don't think they've ex had enough experience with black people to realize that we're right. just people as well right. like yeah um so there is a lot more of that um this conversation that we're having stemmed from someone um, <laughs> making a comment, like out of the blue. We're having mm -hmm. a great conversation and things are going well. And as we are getting ready to like move on and go about our day, out of the blue, they just said, now, why are your hands and your feet like white, per se? Honey, can you put your hands up? <laughs> <laughs> why do they look white and the soles of your feet white? Um, and... I was like, what? Right. First, I was like puzzled. Like, <laughs> what does this have to do with anything? What does this have to do with anything? <laughs> and I sat there and I was like, oh my word, I don't, I don't quite understand what they're trying to say. And then I found myself def trying to defend myself. Right. And I'm like, wait, well, I didn't do anything. Made, yeah. yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I just looked at the person. I said, I don't know. Go ask God because he chose for me to be this way. And they just kind of like smirked. They were like, <laughs> yeah and then i just i sat in that for a while initially I, I told jory i was like i don't i didn't take it offensively i just thought how many of these things are a little mm -hmm. like i wonder if i want do white people have but maybe are too nervous <laughs> too to, ask, to ask yeah um that it might come across weird or whatever the case might be so Long story short, a week passes and we see them again. And I just said, um, I can be confrontational if I need to be, but it's not, natural. Um, it's not natural yeah. to me. People think it is, right. but it's not. Um, so I told Jory, I said, I'm going to ask. And he was like, go for it. And, um, so <laughs> then I asked, I was just like, what did you mean by this? And they were like, <laughs> I don't know like what I was thinking and I was like I'm not offended I'm not upset like I want there to be an open you know mm -hmm. communication if you have any questions feel free to ask me right. I just thought it was weird <laughs> because it was view. like not in sync with the conversation we were yeah, having there was no context. Uh, at all 
and I and I just asked, was that the first time you noticed that? And I'm like, no. I'm like, well, then why did you ask? I don't know. And I'm just like, okay, just know I see. <laughs> <laughs> but so that it stemmed from that, like what other questions are there that mm -hmm. you know because i've had before when someone asked you know does your sun your skin you know do you burn right in the sun that's a valid question right they don't have my skin i don't have their skin now i'm not no i'm not a nosy person like i'm not going i wonder if white people like burn like that maybe because maybe i'm selfish i don't think to ask other people about if they have something different than me, how does that work? I just, just between us, maybe. Like, if you're curious about me, you might ask something. Like what? I don't know. I don't think I've ever. I think skin, we've talked about some, like in terms of melanin and the sun. Well, and yeah, like but that, again, but... that was a valid question. But no. I don't. I don't know. I just take life as it comes. Right. I don't sit and go. I wonder if. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. So um, that was a valid question. I'm like, oh yeah, they wouldn't know it that. Kind of, right, it kind don't. of makes you wonder what's behind the question. Yeah, like Where's what's the motivation? From? Was there conversations that were happening? Yeah. Or, you know, is there something in their mind where they're like, hmm, I wonder if black people da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe that's why their hands are like, well. Going back to the, the situation with the person with my hands and soles of my feet. Uh, I just looked at them. I said, there is no difference between you and I. I just happen to have more melanin. That's, yeah. all. <laughs> That's all there is. Yes, my hair texture is different, but like we're both human. Yeah. Like there's not really anyways. But um yeah, I mean when I the first time I saw a white person in America, I didn't I didn't look at y'all hair. I didn't like I didn't care. <laughs> like I was like there's just another human being walking and they happen to have a different skin. Mm -hmm. I did not go, I wonder how their hair feels. Hmm. I wonder how their skin feels. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> but it is kind of weird to me that people are very intrigued by black women's hair. That yeah. is so weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand it, but back to your question. Alright, so then this one is a little more pointed. Oh, okay. Have you encountered any racism in this community? That's a hard question. Um, or even perceived racism. Definitely perceived, yes. Okay. But as far as like blankly just like, I don't know. I could never tell. Okay, so that leads into my next question. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the difference? Can you talk about the difference between overt and covert racism, mm -hmm. and how that looks, what that looks like. So overt is like I'd rather someone be overtly racist towards me, mm -hmm. because then I know where they stand. It's the tricky ones, the one that go to church and bow their heads and pray, like mm -hmm. and like, and then you know at the store they're staring you down or making comment, looking at um, their friends and cracking jokes or whatever. Or not selling you a bag of rice. <laughs> oh yeah, there was that. Um, so yeah, covert is definitely is definitely hardest to understand and to even wrap my or my head around because. It's not just the racism aspect, it's that it's coupled with manipulation. Mm -hmm. um, like, or they'll set up a question that if you overreact, and then it's like, we figured they were that way. Right, um, kind of plays into a trap. Yeah. yeah, and then if you don't really respond well, then they think they can speak about black people around you. So like, it's just really difficult, but I'm glad that I'm in a new place now as far as like mentally that um, I'm just able to call things out for what they are mm -hmm. um, and before I would feel really bad because I I'm not the type of person to want to embarrass somebody like intentionally uh, now it's like if you are bold enough to ask a question that seems degrading or demeaning I'm bold enough to give you a bold response mm -hmm. and not feel bad about it right now here's a question more about things so what things mm -hmm. do you wish you had access to in this community mm -hmm. that you've had in other communities 
Well, That's obviously hair, hair mm -hmm. products. Um, black people. <laughs> <laughs> just, just more people around that you can relate to in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think I wish I had more salons. Just hair care mm -hmm. is like a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, um, with as far as skin, I can just buy something on Amazon, you know, my shea butter and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But as far as hair products, I think that's yeah. that's the biggest one for me yeah. that I can think of right now. If I think of anything else, I put it on the screen. Right. Or even yeah. like getting Jabin's haircut, we have to. Travel oh yeah, we ways. have to travel like forty five minutes. <clears throat> if I don't, if I don't feel like doing it. That has to be the right, and you've been doing it a lot lately, especially since the lockdown and stuff. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we were. I don't know if I was being asked a question mm -hmm. about racism, and I said something, and they're like, "Well, why don't you just move?" Yeah, why not? And um, but I they were trying to be funny, oh, like okay. avoiding the the uh, the situation at hand mm -hmm. and just dismissing what I'm saying. Oh, they were, okay. I feel like they were being dismissive. Oh, okay. Um. So I'm just like, okay, you're failing to understand the point, given that this is a religious or a very Christian area, mm -hmm. you should do better. Right. But. Right. And that's why that. passive or covert racism is the kind that exists here because yeah. you can, you can play it off. You know, this passive yeah. aggressive way yeah, yeah, yeah. works here yeah. and, and people don't catch on to it and enough people feel the same way about it. But it's been interesting that, you know, some of it's been kind of like seeping out from underneath the surface in the last few years. Yeah. And we're starting to see it more, even in this passive area. Well, I've had a great coach. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was so yep. oblivious to a lot of things. And I thank God that my, like, my eyes and ears were really closed to the negativity. I mm -hmm. really didn't pick up on some things. Right. Until, like, maybe years later, I'm like, <gasps> that's what they meant! Like, <laughs> you know right. so jory um when something happens i go this is what said this is what was said he would say oh honey this is what they meant and i'm yeah. just like ah! yeah if you don't speak passive aggressive it's really hard to understand because i grew up in it so it's like it's, yeah it's a it's a really vile thing where um you can say a really cutting thing mm -hmm. and act like you don't mean it and yeah. no one holds you accountable for yeah. it because you act like you don't mean it. Yeah. And as long as you, as long as people perceive you in the way you want them to perceive you, right. they'll never think you're bad. Yeah. And so it's just this, this, this thing where people are living with a persona, a facade, and they look great on the outside and their life looks great on the outside. Mm -hmm. And, and yet they're really kind of mean or uh, some of them, not all of them, but yeah. you know, there's this, no, it they're creates, mean. It creates a way and an environment for this passive, mm -hmm. covert, and it's not just racism. It can be being evil to people in other ways, too. And it's right. sad. It's sad. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, I think now I can pick upon it. Like, because sometimes he'll ask me a question. I'm used to being like direct. Straightforward, yeah. Like if someone asks me a question, you don't have to wonder what I mean because I'll just say right. it. Right. You won't weigh all your answers and try and figure out what's going to sound best and what well, that no, person wants to hear. Hey, I'm not that witty. I'm not that <laughs> fast. Um, because I just speak from my heart. So yeah. if someone asks me a pointed question, I will give a pointed answer. Not right. one of these political, right. like answers that politicians give where you're never <laughs> answering the question and you you let people assume what you're saying right like that's pretty much what passive aggressive people do mm -hmm. is they let you assume what they mean um and i think it's sad and quite frankly it's borderline evil no i don't think it's borderline <laughs> <laughs> okay it's evil <laughs> yeah. okay can you share an awkward experience you've had as a black woman being married to a white guy. You know, when you were reading that question, like something popped into my mind and maybe I am ready to talk about it a little bit. I'm not going to give names or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be very general. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, dear friends, keep, keep looking, looking up. up.